Have you been thinking about moving out of California? Well, you're not alone. Here are five things you need to know about before making that move. Be right back. Hey guys, thanks for checking out the channel. Charles Capelho with Pinnacle State Properties. If this is your first time here, it's an honor and privilege to have you. We really appreciate you checking out our channels. So let's get to today's topic. Moving out of California. If you've been thinking about it or know people who have, you're not alone. There's been a ton of people thinking about that same subject and a lot of people have already made that move. But of all of that, and most of our clients that moved out have come back and said, you know what, there are several things we really wish we would have known before making that move. So that's the point of today's video. It's to give you some five things that you need to know about before making that move. Let's get started. Number one. If you have a house to sell here in California, I highly encourage you to hire an agent. And there's many reasons why. But most importantly, you know, when making the move to anywhere really within your own city or to another state, timing is of the essence. You know, you want to make sure that the timeline fits on both ends. And hiring an agent is going to help you do that. Um, also, you know, if you're moving to a different state, their laws and policies regarding real estate might be different than here in California. So those two agents will be able to talk and help coordinate that move. The last thing you want to do is get there and not have anything ready, not have a place to stay, and, and you know your stuff is not there and causing a mess. You want to reduce as much stress as possible up front. So that's going to be very important. Number two, get your house ready for sale. If you have a house to sell here in California to make that move, you want to get it ready. You know, real estate sales is no different than, you know, cars or anything else. You're competing with other people doing the same thing. So you want to get your house ready. The area I would start with is make the repairs that are needed. You know your house, you've been in it long enough, you know what's broken. If it's broken or you know it is in need of repair, make that repair. It'll make things so much easier doing the sales process. The last thing you want to be doing is negotiating night after night for the repairs of the house when the buyer makes that demand and they always do so make the repairs needed also i would put a fresh coat of paint in your house something light and bright and neutral paint goes a long way it makes your house look brand new um, so that's one of the easiest fixes i would do to get your house ready for sale number three pack now you're going to make the move anyway and you're going to have to do it i'd start the packing process as soon as possible and the area I would start with is all that clutter. You know that stuff we've been sitting, that's been sitting in the corner, we've collected all that stuff and we haven't used it in years. Put, start putting that stuff in the box now. Um, it's gonna do us several things. It's gonna start the packing process and start your moving process. But two, it's gonna open up your house so when buyers walk in, they can actually see a clean house and imagine their own stuff being in that house. So that's the first place I'd start right now. Number four, you're probably gonna buy a house in the other state. If anything, you're gonna lease someplace or rent someplace until you get situated over there. And what you're gonna to wanna to know is how much money do you have to spend on that process? One of the easiest ways to do that if you have a sale, uh, a house to sell here in California is find out how much you're gonna make at the end of the sale. And that's an easy fix. Ask your agent for what's called a seller's net sheet. What that's gonna do is break down the cost and fees of selling your house, but most importantly, it's gonna give you a net proceeds of what you're estimated to get at the end of the sale. Now, small disclosure here, it's not gonna include the taxes or anything like that. That's a question for your tax professional. However, it's gonna, again, break down the fees and then what you're probably gonna get at the end of the sale after all fees are paid. Number five. So, in most cities that people move into, um, they really don't know much about it. They know what they've seen on Google or what their friends have told them, or maybe they did a vacation in that city and really loved it. But you know, when you're moving to a new city or state, you know, things are different when you're actually gonna live there. What I would do, and what most of my clients did before making that move, is we hired an agent on that other side. The other, other agent is an expert in that area. They're the housing market, they, they can recommend certain areas, they can recommend, you know, amenities that you're looking for. So I would hire an agent. I would hire an agent through a network like myself and my team are part of. We're part of what's called the leading real estate companies of the world. It's a network of real estate agents throughout the United States um, in, in almost every state. 
where we work together to make that transaction as smooth as possible. We work with the same work ethics and the standard of customer service, and we communicate constantly to make sure that the transaction is smooth. So make sure you have one of those on your team. It's gonna be important. So those are five reasons. Let me give you a bonus reason that you know, a lot of the clients wish they would have known before they made the move. Um, if you do hire a moving company, which a lot of people do because that's a lot of stuff to travel with, especially across state lines, read your contract. And in the contract, focus on the timelines that they pose in that contract. You know, so many clients have gotten to their city um, or state that they moved to and were called by the moving company to say, well, according to your contract, we weren't supposed to be there for two more days. And there you are sitting in your new house or place in another state with nothing to use, no clothes, no amenities, nothing. That requires you to go out and spend more money and you know, just to get you by. If you know that timeline up front and you talk to the, com the moving company, honestly, you can make sure of the timelines that are agreed upon in the contract, or at least know up front whether they're gonna get there after you arrive. Therefore, you can pack a few things, some clothing, some toiletries, whatnot, to get you by until all your stuff arrives. So make sure you read the contract completely. You know, also a little personal advice here, you know, cheaper is not always better. I found that out with all the equipment I use for these recordings, and you know, I wish I would have just spent the extra money up front. The same with the moving companies. Make sure that you know you get a reputable company that you know if they cost a little bit more, but they're gonna do the job, is probably money well spent. So make sure you check on that. All right, guys, so those are you know several areas that a lot of clients said they wish they would have known about before making the move. It would have made things a lot smoother for them. So I wanted to make sure I got that information to you as well. If you like that vid this video or this channel, hit that subscribe button, please. We're gonna be doing a lot more videos about the vice. We're gonna be having live chats with you know free real estate advice on days you don't want to miss those times um, when we have. Them. But uh, in other words, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification button, and use it as a resource so you're able to have the accurate truth about real estate. Thanks again, guys. We'll see you on the next one.